Welcome boys and girls, I am Huey Team with the first part of Young Derry Chan. I think it's like the second visual novel I'm gonna do. Well the first one was Ace Attorney which I am which is uh which I didn't finish yet. Why? Well I was going to play on the computer but still I well I plan to move it to the iPhone version since the iPhone version has better sprites. I mean like high quality sprites and I can make actually videos. I can actually make videos with my iPhone so Maybe if I will have, if I will continue the series, it will be most likely on the iPhone version. But continue on. I also made a previous version of of a little play of this game, but I didn't upload it. I mean, I was going to upload it, but I didn't publish it yet. It's probably going to be on Hoodie Team Velocity tapes, you know, that show it, that series which, I, which I'm supposed to do but never do because I pretty much never not upload the videos I record. Yeah, the only video in that series was uh, my actual Sunlight Let's Play. I mean, like, let's we have the demo it came about depression, and the only reason it was a lost tape because I was going to upload it on my on my previous channel, but I didn't. But I'm sorry that I, that I keep talking shit instead of instead of playing the game. Let's continue. Class, we have a new student joining us today. I want you all to make him feel welcome. You can come in now. I opened the door. A hushed silence filled the class classroom as I nervously approached the teacher's podium, and I wrote my name on the chalkboard. Big Dick McFuck Muffin Fudgy. God damn it, I knew my parents were assholes. Okay, continue on. I'm just gonna make myself hoodie. Just hoodie, you know. That's my nickname. And you can if you want, you know, if, if there's one if there's one nickname I'd like to call on the internet, it's hoodie. I'm hoodie. <clears throat> Sorry. I'm hoodie. It's very nice to meet you all. Welcome to our class, hoodie. Please take a seat over there. Yes, sir. Oh wait, I thought my teacher was a female. Sorry, stereotypes. I only had like two, three, no, four, four male teachers in my entire life. <clears throat> Sorry. I could feel the eyes of every student upon me as I made my way to the empty desk. And thus began my first day at, at a new school. The morning session went by really fast. Before I knew it, it was lunchtime. Hey, Hitty, come sit with us. Huh? A girl called me over to the door desk. Well, when the lady requests, I generally oblige it. You know, that's just me. Three other students, another girl, and two boys were emerging from the desk at first. I guess they do this every day. So I can become a part. So I can maybe I can join the cool kids. Nice! I pulled my chair over and they made some room for me to sit. As we ate, they asked me questions about where I moved from and what my hobbies were. 12 inches, I'm single. I'm hot, yeah, whatever. No, I'm just kidding, that no, I'm just kidding the boy. Some of the girls assured me that if I ever needed any help around the camp with they could ask her for help. So she would like give me private lessons? <laughs> no, no, don't worry, I don't I don't mean that in, in that sense. I mean that he would fuck all night. That I that that's what I mean. Continuing on. We were all they were all nice people and it wasn't long before we started joking around and having fun. Wow. I don't make friends this fast in real life. It took me like three to four, like one week. It took me, it took me the first in goddamn week in the school just to make some friends, and he just got, he just has to have friends within the first day. God damn, this hoodie is a fucking social dude. And then I noticed something out of the corner of my eye. That girl sitting by herself at the back of the classroom, not eating, not studying, just staring. Straight at me, with unwavering eyes. From what, I, from what I could recall, I don't think she stopped staring at me since I arrived. I knew I was the new guy and all, but it was a bit unnerving. Even as I tried to shift my attention back to the conversation, I could still feel her vacant gaze piercing through the back of my head. So basically, I, I ha when I go home, I'm gonna have to shut all my all my windows, cover the blinds, and and just cover and just cover the windows with the curtains. Why? Because I know that if I look out the window tonight, she will be there. Oh. Hmm. As I turned around to get a better look at her, she she got up and she got up and walked out of the classroom. That was weird. Who was that girl? And why, she, and why was she staring at me so intently? Did she know me from somewhere? Pretty cute, isn't she? Huh? I turned around and back. I turned back around and saw that the others were screaming at me. That girl you were looking at, I said she's cute. Oh uh, yeah, I guess. The 
it's true. She was. From what little of her, from what little of her eyes that I saw anyway. But that's not why, why, why I was trying to get a look at her. Her name is Mia. We introduced it to her, but she's not really the socializing type. Her sweet said while well, snudging me in the arm. What do you mean by that? She's a recluse! Why don't anybody try to talk to her she just walk away or just ignore him? Hell, I don't think I've even heard her speak, let alone socialize. I have, but I have, but only very short sentences, and even there she sounds like a robot. Hello, I am a girl. Nice to meet you. My name is Girl. That's probably crazy. Hi. <laughs> Alright, okay, that was over really really long. She tends to she tends to avoid doing contact whenever possible. Hmm. Is it because she's shy or not very good at talking to people? I'm the latter. I mean, I'm not that shy. It's just I'm not very good at talking to people. I'm just kind of afraid of talking to people because I always I just always assume the words like, oh man, what if I say something stupid? And just sometimes I just you know, I just say something like, oh man, that was so stupid. Forget I always said that. Okay. It's possible. She was in the same class as me last year, even then she behaved in exactly the same way. And that was not even lunchtime. Most days, she would treat the library and save her until it's time to go back to class. Too bad, if she wasn't so weird and loop, I'd totally ask her out. Oh, great. Everyone is fuck everyone is into the shy ones, huh? Why Why doesn't it happen in real life? Wait, I'm not- I, I just said that I'm not shy, so why, so why do I care? <laughs> I'd be contradicting myself, oh man. Self-contradiction is the mother of hypocrisy. Does that even make sense? Whatever. I don't it doesn't have to make sense. I'm a teenager. The hell you would. I'd already be going out with her. <laughs> like you even stood a chance with her. Hey, shut up! God, you're both hopeless. She may be weird, but she has to be completely insane about to go out with, you, with either of you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she has to be completely insane to go out with them. Maybe she would go out with me, but you know, that's just me. I know, right? Absolutely no chance! Oh, come on, girls, don't be like that. Hey, help me out here. Leave me out of this. We carried on like that until the afternoon bell rang. All in all, it was a pretty fun time. Ah, believe me, in my class, we there's less. Hey, shut up! Dude, help, dude, help me out here, and there's more. Here. Here's a sticker you can put on your dick. Ew, get the fuck away from me, pervert. And no, I'm not making this up. That was a genu genuine uh, fucking conversation that my, two of my friends had during English class. Not, not like a genuine, not like a conversation they had, they had in, you know, when the, so that the, the teacher could hear. It just was a private conversation between them. <laughs> oh man, my class is the wackiest class I know, believe me. After, cla <clears throat> After class ended, I was wanted to come out and hang out with my new friends. No oh, new friends, no oh, new friends. Sorry. However, I was instructed to meet the principal after school in order to fill out the remainder of my application forms. I'm just saying. I, I never transferred schools, but you know, I don't think they'd be let you attend this school if you didn't fill out your ap application forms. I have to ask some of the transfer students in my class if, you, if that happened, but you know, they probably look at me with questioning looks. So I had to reluctantly decline the offer. By the time I had finished filling up my forms, everyone had already gone home. I left the principal's office and walked down the empty hallway. Hoodie! Huh? As I reached the second floor, a soft voice called out my name. Oh. I wasn't expecting anybody else to be here. Especially not her. But there she was, standing right in front of me. The reclusive girl who was staring at me all throughout class. Although at this point she seemed far less reclusive than before. I'm really glad that she transferred to our school. When I saw you wearing our uniform this morning, I thought I might have just been dreaming. But here you are. Finally, we get to be in the same class together. I'm so happy it's almost scary. Uh, yeah. Talk about scary. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying that if a girl that I barely know just walked up to me and just said, Hey, how are you, Hoodie? Oh my, oh man, I'm so happy that you're in our school. Oh my, I'm so happy to go to the same class as you. Hooray! I probably be like, uh, what the fuck? Yeah, it's how exactly how I would react. <laughs> in a matter of seconds, this girl had gone from being a functional mute to a happy puppy, and she was talking like we had met before. This kind of happened to me in real life, like when a girl, 
but this but 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 that was actually the case like we had met before sorry i just told the story there were, in my high school there's this chick who once walked up to me and said oh hi hoodie so nice to meet you it's so good to see you it's so it's so good to see you i'm so happy you're going we, I'm, I'm going to the same school as you and then it just go and i just remember oh crap it's that girl i went to preschool with oh man and no she's not a soon daddy childhood friend sorry sorry fanfic f sorry fanfic fuel you just sorry no fanfic fuel for you yet well, who am i kidding one day people are gonna be gonna be writing yaoi fanfiction about me and one day i'm gonna have to read a fanfic just to, just to jokingly acknowledge those who are writing yaoi fanfiction about me which they will see as as an incentive to write more yaoi fanfictions fanfiction i mean <laughs> oh man maybe not um, I figured it would, I would remember me so as cute as her, but I was drawing a, a complete blank. More importantly, what was she doing here all alone at this time of the evening? It's possible that she stayed behind to catch up on some studying, but that still didn't explain why she was just standing in the halls like that. It couldn't be that she was waiting for me. Was she? I remember back to my conversation with her soon this afternoon. They did say that she was a bit of a weirdo. But well, it could be just... But well, it could... But well, it could just be that she had me confused with someone else. She just liked that one song. Do that refuse. You must have me confused with someone over a guy. Sorry. I'm not that good, very good of a singer. Especially I can't sing Justin Timberlake that well. <clears throat> could it be that she had forgotten my name, Hoodie? No, of course not. Damn. I responded spontaneously. Although that wasn't actually a lie. I don't think I ever seen this girl before, much less knew her name. Gah! So cute! It's no wonder the guys were fighting over her. I didn't want to say anything that was upset her. It was really so important that I knew her name. Yes! Yes! Sorry. Sorry for my outburst, it's just, you know. It's kind of. It's just, you know. It's kind of rude to, for, to forget the name of someone who you are supposed to know for some time. What if your. What if your best friend forgot your name? Well, this may be a different case, but you know, I'm just saying. Well, I already put my foot in my mouth by implying that it hadn't forgotten. I had no choice but to follow through with an answer. Now think, Hoodie. I remember that one of the guys told me her name during lunch, but for the life of me, I couldn't fully remember what it was. I think it was me something, but I wasn't quite sure. I just had to take a while to get some hope for the best. Besides, even if I did get it wrong, I could just apologize and ask her and ask her for the right answer. I was sure that she would understand. Okay. Here we go. Her name is Mimi Mimi Mini Mini Mo Mia Ace Attorney Miku Hatsume Vocaloid Singer Japan Mia. Judging from the awkward silence, it was clear that I had gotten wrong. Hitty! Huh? Ah! Before I knew what had happened, she had leapt. In Before I knew what had ha what had happened, she had leapt into my arms and was bringing her face to my chest. I knew you would never forget me. You'd never do something so mean. This is wonderful. It's finally happening. This isn't a dream. I can feel you. Your body's so warm. You're actually here. I'm so happy. Hoodie. What was up with this girl? Yeah, I'd probably be creeped out if the girl suddenly jumped my, into my arms just after I said her name. One utterance of her name and she was over me. Not that I was complaining or anything. <laughs> yeah. It's not. It's not. Anno yeah, it's not usual for for girls to toss herself, toss themselves at me just because I said their name. Not yet. Maybe I'll have fangirls that. Maybe one day I have enough fangirls that when I meet one on the street and see her name, she'll be like, "Oh my God! You just said my name! Oh my God! Please fuck me!" <laughs> no, don't worry. I'm not the type of guy who would take advantage of that situation. It's not every day that a cute girl throws herself at me like this. But I did feel bad that the only reason it happened was because I never soon had to tell me her name. It's not like I remember her because of any previous encounter with her. I would have told her the truth, but she was just so happy that I didn't want to upset her. So I just had to live with the fact that I lied to some girl I never met before. Together, and we can eat lunch together, and we can study together, and... I was so deep in my own thoughts that I hadn't noticed that she was still talking to me. Not only that, her grip on my body had tightened. It's like she was worried that if I that she let go of me, I was going to vanish to thin air or something. I'm not an anime character. If I'm not, I'm not one of those emo anime characters. But if you, but if you don't, board, but if you don't tie them up, they will, they won't, they won't fucking, they will fucking escape. 
It was a good thing that there was nobody around at that time. If anybody saw Guru hanging off me, the gossip would spread like wildfire. Yeah, that reminds me of how uh, everyone everyone thought that I was dating some chick in my class just because she was the one I was the only one she talked to. I mean, out of her class, I was the only one she talked to. She wasn't even that attractive, you know, physically. She wasn't even that physically attractive. I can do better. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Take what you take what you take what you can get. <laughs> yeah. Especially since the girl in question was the quiet recluse that all the guys were gunning for. <laughs> Imagine the badass boats I can make. You guys were trying to get with her for the last years. Ha! <laughs> I, I fucking got her in one day. <laughs> you guys are so lame. Just to be safe, I decided to do something about it. I grabbed a hold of Mia's shoulders and pulled her off of me. Huh? Why? Why did you pull away, Hoodie? Why would you do such a thing? Ah, she's like a baby who just like has had her favorite toy taken away from them. Hey, hey, I'm not a toy. I'm not anyone's teddy bear. I'm just saying that I'm not anyone's toy or or cuddle buddy. It makes me. It made me feel like a real jerk. Although I wasn't really at fault. It was normal reaction being hugged by a stranger. What about those what about the free hugs there or whatever? Although to her, she probably thought it was acceptable because she, because we allegedly knew each other. But I need to tell her that it wasn't polite to jump to people like that. Girl, not in public. In private you can jump my bones however you want. I mean in private you can jump my bones whenever you want, but in public, that's a big no no. Even that if even if that made me look like an ass. Come on now, take it easy. It's great that you're happy and all, but it's not nice to go running to people. Huh? As I was talking, I took a step back. As I felt my foot kick something on the floor. Hmm? I looked down and noticed that the entire area around us was littered with school supplies. And that's not all. They were all labeled Property of Mia. I wasn't sure what to make of that. And there were many who was, in, who was in the habit of labeling all their all their possessions. Well, for all I knew, she was a klutz who would frequently lose their things and started putting labels on them, so that they could be returned to her and be found. Or maybe she had a compulsive habit of sticking labels onto everything she owned. Well, technically, if she act, if it was the latter, then she probably put that label on me. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm just joking. Well, she probably would think that she owns me and just put a label onto me that says "Property of Mia." Crap. I think I just I just gave fanfiction offers an idea. Oh well. Send me the fanfic when you finish it, okay? Well if that were the case, she would also have labels on her desk and all, and all over her uniform. And I'm pretty sure I would have I would have noticed if she did that. Unless they were on the inside of her clothes. Interesting theory. <laughs> but once again I was getting off track. Summary, there was stuff on the floor that wasn't very earlier. Oh, sorry. My best guess is that when Mia jumped into my arms, she dropped her school bag and spilled all, all over all, all of her things on the on the floor, as if there was any po other possible reason. So it was funny how it took me this long to notice. Seriously, you should pay more attention to what you're doing, or somebody might get hurt. I lectured her as I knelt down and picked up her bag. Oh shit! This guy is just like my dad. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> oh my god. She's he's just like my dad. When when some when, when I fuck something up, my dad's like, mm, "Hoodie, you d don't do that. This is wrong. You shouldn't do that. Maybe I am, d maybe I am doing this. Maybe I am making the same mistake. But you are not allowed to make the mistakes I make or whatever." But he at least has good intentions, so I don't hate him that much. Mm, Hoodie is mad at me. Mia looked away with a dejected expression on her face. <laughs> her adorableness was making it very difficult for me to keep a serious face. I'm not mad, I'm just not a big fan of stepping on somebody else's things and breaking them. <laughs> Fuck me. Speak of the devil. As I was packing the tools back into her bag, I shifted my weight onto, onto my left knee and accidentally crushed the calculator that had fallen underneath. Damn! That was a fucking... How much mo Muay Thai did that guy have to train to be able to just break something by applying enough pressure with his knee on something? 
Dude, this guy is fucking buff. Or he had some heavy Muay Thai training. Just saying. Only a person can perform a flying knee can have can can have enough can have enough power in his knee to just crush something with it by, by pressing his knee against something. Needless to say, he was also labeled property of Mia. Also needless to say, my knee was hurting. And it was a tear in my pants. I guess that what that's what I get for buying a like, discount clothing store. Well that's what you get for bringing Polish pants into Japanese schools, you asshole. I picked up a calculator and examined it closely. That screen had been completely shattered. Damn, this guy had this guy is a fucking Muay Thai expert, damn damn up in this bitch. And I could see small drops of my blood on the inside circuit on the inside circuitry. Damn That was, that was a good that was a good knee. <laughs> it had been rendered completely useless. Yeah. If it had if it hadn't been rendered completely useless, I'd take some time to admire the fucking damage I I caused on it, but you know, I'm not an asshole. Just lovely. I looked at the Mia who stared back at me with a, look, with a look of complete shock on her face. I contemplated scolding her again about the influence of self-awareness. Hey, don't be that much of an asshole, dude. I really gave her one lecture. You don't have to give her two lectures in like, in its span of ten minutes. But judging by her expression, it looked like she understood what she did. I calmly stood back up and handed her her bag while holding the broken calculator in my other hand. Uh, sorry about that. I'll buy you another one later, I promise. Uh. 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 Mia? Hey, no! Huh? Uh. And once again, she tackled me. Oh crap, she's gonna kill me, isn't she? Only this time, I was knocked to the ground. Damn! Did she play football? Ah! Uh. I was that about. Uh. I set out to find Mia frantically pulling back my left pant leg and, exa and examining my knee. Mia, what the hell? Mia, what the hell are you? Hoodie's knee! Hoodie's knee! Hoodie's knee! It's injured! Hoodie's knee is injured! Does it hurt, Hoodie? Does it? Are you alright? Are you in pain? There's blood! There's dirt! It's getting to a wound! It's going to get infected! Hoodie's going to get sick! Stay right there! Don't move! I'll help you! I'll help you, Hoodie! It was unbelievable. This girl was falling to pieces over a tiny cut. Ah, uh, she should see me on a Saturday night. That's where I get big cuts. And they're self-inflicted, if you know what I mean. Most people my age masturbate. Most, well, I am not most people my age. I mean, I do masturbate, but not that regularly. Shit. That was gross. I could that she was partially responsible for causing. But at that point, my back was hurting considerably more than my knee. Uh, not, no doubt the result of being tackled to the floor. <laughs> now you know how a football player feels. Also her fault, I might add. But I wasn't about to bring that up. Ah. This kid was already was already treating the situation like a code blue emergency. Are the cold blue emergency series offenses like parking tickets? <laughs> Just kidding, don't worry. If I told her that I sustained another injury, she'd probably have a heart attack. It was strange, but in another way it was kinda cute. I guess there comes a time in every man's life when, when he hopes to meet a girl who will make a big fuss over him. But even in their wildest dreams, I doubt any of the girls behaved quite as recklessly as this. I had to put a stop to this before she went too far and ended up calling an ambulance. Hey, Mia, look, I'm... Gah! Also referencing an ambulance, I remember when my dad had a freaking... Let me tell you what. My dad had a fucking motor motorcycle accident and he freaking almost... He had a broken leg, he spent a lot of time in the hospital. And then he had some sort of, uh, let me tell you what he had, I'll just look at it, look up what, what it was. Oh, a stroke. My dad had a stroke, yeah. My dad had a stroke, he went to the hospital and basically, I remember when he had a stroke and we, and we had to call an ambulance and, they, and the paramedics refused to carry him, they gave him some medication and fucked off. And then we had to transfer him to the hospital ourselves later that day. We still, the whole time when dad was, was in the hospital, we were trying to find those guys who fucking refused to, to refuse to transfer into the hospital and, give, and and freaking tell them, look, you had a freaking stroke and you almost and you almost and you freaking just left him there. What the hell, man? But you know, we didn't find him, unfortunately. <laughs> maybe maybe fortunately because my family would probably make a big fuss over it. Why would you feel, dude? Not cool. Not freaking cool. <laughs> I tra I trailed off in my own fuss again, so I wasn't paying attention to what she was trying to do. I snapped that out of it just as Mia's tongue was moving straight from my knee. Whoa, whoa, I'm not into that shit, woman. 
Grover, no need for that. Phew, that was too close. Oh, sorry. Mia looked at me with sorrow, sorrow eyes. What if I... What if I... What if I don't clean my wound? Germs are going to get in and you will get sick. Yeah, and if I will let you... And if I let you lick my cut, you'll get sick. Was she for real? She was willing and ready to lick my wound clean as some kind of animal. You know, she could have just kissed it better, but you know, that's just my opinion. And given the way things have progressed by that point, I would actually have mine in one bit. I knew that if I let this go on any longer, somebody was going to get hurt. I quickly rolled up my pants and got back on my feet. But, hoodie... Look, I'm fine, see? I think a band they won't fix. Speaking of which, I better dispose of this before anyone else gets hurt. I walked into a nearby classroom and sported a broken calculator in the, in the trash. Mia stared vacantly at me as I walked out of the classroom. Now oh, come on, you get dirty if you stay down there. I held out my hand to help her up. As I moved towards her, her line of sight didn't change. She seemed to be lost in her own little world. A world full of rainbows, candy, and gummy bears. I moved in closer and gently nudged her on the shoulder. Mia? Huh? Mia just it like she was just woken up, woken up from deep sleep. <laughs> well, the only person that I ever wake from a deep sleep is my dad, and when I wake, wake up from a deep sleep, he goes ballistic. Let me just tell you. Yeah, I didn't, I, I didn't come from a function, normal functioning family. I'll just tell you that flat out. She blinked a few times, and then she noticed me standing in front of her. I held my hand out again to help her up. She just stared at it. After a moment of silence, she finally took my hand and I pulled her up off the floor. That was strange. It was actually had suddenly switched off. I sometimes do that, but you know, not the way she does. I mean, I just, I just like sit down and think, not even look at you. Maybe I accidentally look at, stare at someone, you know. I just know, but people that know me don't mind me staring at them because they just know that, I'm, that most of the time I'm not genuinely staring at them. I'm just thinking, thinking about something where I'm also looking in the direction that they are and that they are. Sorry. Continuing on. What was that about? I started to brush the dust off her clothes. I guess she didn't mind because she didn't show any signs of resistance. That sounds kind of rapey. Me? Me? Why do you, why do you sound so rapey? The average girl probably gets nervous if the boys start touching them. Uh, rapey. At least that's what, I've been, that's what I've been told. Well, well, I'm kind of embarrassed to say this, but I, well, <laughs> I once dry fisted my female friend's vagina. Don't ask. Don't ask, seriously. Okay, I know you are asking, so I'll just tell you this. You were just, you know, pr playfully wrestling. No, that's not a code name for sex. And we were, and I basically like jokingly like punched her in, you know, in a, in her sweet spot, and she, which she found actually, which she actually kind of find, found kind of funny. And then she also, and then she recently mentioned how some of her, some of the boys in the class started touching her, which is strange because she apparently has a boyfriend. <laughs> sorry, sorry, that's just that's another uh, fucking snippet from my fucked up life. I think it was like uh, fucking paragraph 17, chapter 5. But then again, it was becoming abundantly clear that I wasn't dealing to the average girl. You've just noticed that now. Mm. you just noticed that now. Heck, from what I witnessed in the short amount of time we spent together, I didn't think you. I think it was. It was safe that, to assume that the concept of personal face didn't register for. Yeah, I would just be like, uh, Mia, you are invading my personal space. And Mia's like, I am your personal space, hoodie. No other girl can, 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 can get this close to you. I mean, no other girl can, this, can get this close to you. Are we? You got that? Oh man, <laughs> that would be freaking creepy, you know? I mean, if a girl just if, I, if a girl was just so close to me and just and I was just like, uh, personal, uh, I have personal space, and she was like, I am your personal space, and I'd probably just be fucking creep, terrified. Well, not terrified, just creeped out. Unless, of course, it involves a putting contact with a different body. Guess that meant I was special. Well, whoop the fucking do, like usual, I am special. I didn't know where that was good, good or bad. Most of the time that's bad, believe me. If you can't blend into the crowd, then you're gonna be treated like shit. I know that from experience. You're trading off again, hoodie. You really need to start doing that. 
I slapped myself on the cheek and finished brushing the dust of Mia's clothes. Imagine the, the visual novel from Mia's perspective, seriously. Imagine the visual- Imagine this from Mia's perspective, just- just me just going- STOP TRAINING ASS! STOP tra STOP TRAINING UP, HONEY! And just me pimp slapping myself repeatedly by, while also brushing up her clothes. Mia, a normal girl would probably run, run the fuck away if a guy just said suddenly just like- Stared at her while brushing up her clothes and said, "Stop trailing off!" And he started smacking himself around. All the while, she remained quiet as a mouse, and her expression had reverted back to the same vacant one she had throughout the day. It was making it very difficult to say what she was thinking. Strange. So she is. Isn't she, isn't that a bit like Mikisa Ackerman from uh, Attack on Titan? Ah, whatever. One minute she was bubbly and vibrant. But next she was a mannequin. Maybe she maybe she's bipolar. Well maybe. I don't think that's it. I don't think that's it. I don't think that you know sudden mood swings are that are that are that you know much of sudden mood swings in this me in this con sudden mood swings like this are not I, I don't think sudden mood, sw mood swings are this are part like this are part of bipolar disorder but whatever. I'm not a psychologist. <laughs> I don't, hell I am afraid of becoming a psychologist because if I because if I was because if I actually knew psychology, they probably knew what the fuck is wrong with me, and I don't want to know. I just don't want to know what the fuck is wrong with me. Believe me. But it has been a long day, particularly within the last few minutes. Maybe she was just tired. I know I was. Either way, I couldn't shake this uncomfortable feeling I was getting from all the silence. It's getting late. We should get going. I don't know about you, but my mom will kick my ass if I'm not home from dark. I tried to alleviate this strange sense of awkwardness I was feeling by making a joke. A truthful joke, joke, mind you. I knew full well that what would well, leave me when I got home tonight was a fistful of whoop ass from my beloved smother. Mother. And judging from the complete lack of response, I could tell that Mia wasn't even listening to me. So this guy gets a full can of whoop ass from his mom, huh? <laughs> well, I also get a can of whoop ass from my mom on a regular basis. A verbal one, in my case. Ah. I'm not perfect. I'm a bit of an asshole, I, I, I admit. I'm a bit of a lazy asshole, I'm selfish sometimes, I'm a jerk, and, I, and I'm generally a hot asshole who just, who just goes, who just, who's like a, who is just a, a bit of a sociopath at times. But I'm still not as bad as my mom sometimes get, can get. Mia? Huh? You still with me? Oh, hoodie. The very same. The one and only Hoodie Teen. I don't think there's a guy called Hoodie out there on, that has the same nickname as I do. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? I miss you so. Seems like it's been forever since you've been gone. Hmm. Yes, I wasn't the only one for Patrick who freaking lost my own thoughts. Mia is genuinely a fucking visual novel protagonist. You know? Hey, Zero Q. Let me pitch it to you. Young Derry Chan, from Mia's perspective. I can even help you write this if you wanna. If you make this, I, I can even help you write this script for it. But please, make this. I just wanna see the fucking events of this visual novel from Mia's perspective. Also, how's the reboot going, Zero Q? I wanna play the reboot. Right now. <laughs> nah, don't worry. I saw the preview. I wanna play it right now. Don't worry, I'm not that impatient. I can still wait. In that case, I was able to cut her some slack, some slack. Well, never mind. The important thing is we're back now. And just in time, too. We should get going before it gets too dark. I'll meet you. I'll meet you outside. Huh? Did you forget something back at the class? No. Toilet. <laughs> oh, uh, okay then. I'll, uh, yeah, I'll just wait for you outside. I simply turned around and hurried back towards the stairs. I guess that's why Mia was being so quiet. She needed to use the toilet, but I was unable to speak up because I was too busy putting my hands all over her. <laughs> uh, sorry, kind of creepy. <laughs> Not in that way, mind you. Of course. We just had to say, I was putting my hands all over her, and then just go, but not in that way, mind you, because she, he obviously knew what, what we were thinking. That must have been embarrassing for her. I, for once, was feeling pretty sheepish. If I could see my face in the mirror, I'd be my face with bright red at this point. I will call you beat face from now on. Smooth, please. Just smooth. Making the girl stand around listening to you while she needs to use the ladies' room. I continued to condemn myself as I made my way outside. 
Yeah, I do that shit sometimes in real life, in real life too. I just go, God damn it, hoodie. Why did you have to say that? Or, God damn it, why didn't I study it more? After a few minutes, Mia came out, and the two of us made our way to the train station. A lot of time had passed since school got out. So it went without saying that I had missed my train. Ordinarily, I would have boarded a much earlier train to get home. But due to my meeting with the principal today, I knew that I would end up missing it. So I checked the train schedule before I had arrived at school this morning to see when, when the next one would arrive. I was hoping to finish fill out my forms and make it to the station in time to catch it. However, due to my unforeseen encounter with Mia, I ended up missing that train as well. I went over to the timetable again to see if my, any other trains were heading this way, heading my way. The next train wasn't due for another 20 minutes. Oh, fuck me, I hate when that happens. Well, I go to school, I mean go to and from school by tram, so I know what it feels to have to sometimes have to wait a long time for a tram. I figured I should get at least call my mom until I was going to be late. I probably would have done that sooner, but with anything that had happened, the thought had completely slipped my mind. Okay, mom. See you soon. Bye. And then just, I, and then, and then me would just pull out fucking Tourette's and just go, uh-huh, uh-huh. Are you shitting me? Fuck. You can't do shit without your balls. Beep. <sighs> I foresee an ass, whoop an ass whooping in my near future. Oh, dude. It's like you're reading my mind. Well, you're an extension of my, of a part of myself, so technically, I'm not surprised. Almost makes me wish the train wouldn't come. I snuck to myself as I walked over to Mia, who was sitting on a nearby bench. <laughs> it appeared as though Mia had re regained her chill for attitude. She was clutching her school back and rocking from side to side. That's fucking creepy. <laughs> I have to say, if, if I like a girl that I knew was just like, just like sitting on a bench, just with her school, just like, Hugging her school back and which is like rocking back from back and forth from side from side to side, just going. <laughs> I'd probably be fucking creeped out. I'll be vis visibly creeped out. I never knew anyone who felt that good after going to the toilet. She must have had a really big bowel. Okay, I stopped myself right there. Oh, ew. Then it occurred to me, with everything that had happened, Mia would have missed her normal train as well, and she had been to look at the schedule. Although she didn't seem all that at all anxious, while well, I knew her usual train hadn't just hadn't even arrived yet. Maybe this was a normal routine for her. <laughs> or maybe she was just so lost in her own little world that she didn't even know where she was. Or where she is was, for some reason it's written. Sorry. Just imagine what's going on inside her world. The magical teddy, the magical cotton candy teddy bear is just is fighting the fucking the ra rainbow magical clown of doom or whatever <laughs> spinning betty versus versus twerking johnny <laughs> just, as well, just as well i was with her at that point if mia was sitting by herself completely unaware of her surroundings and some perps sat down next to her well i didn't want to think about that i had more enough more than enough fletcher's spots for one afternoon anyway you're a male Ground control to major Mia. I tapped me lightly on the shoulder. Hmm? And much like back at school, she woke up from her daydream with a small jump. Oh, hoodie. The one and only. Same exact response too. There can be only one me. So this is why I so this is why I had killed my twin brother. Not not really, mind you. I don't have a twin brother. So, do you really do you, do you really imagine a world where there's two of me? No, in a world where there is two of me, it would be fucking shitty, <laughs> let me tell you. I was starting to wonder if this girl was really as introverted as the one said she was. Maybe she was just spacey. For example, when the other students tried to talk to her at school, it could be that her head was in the clouds and she simply didn't notice them. That could be easily misconstrued as being reclusive, and that would also account for other reputation for being weird. It could be that, during the course of the, our brief encounter, I, the new case, managed to solve the mystery of the quiet loner girl. Bitch, I'm a badass. First day at school, I solved the biggest mystery of the of the, of the school. Which brings me to me br being an asshole and bragging about my accomplishments. 
basically in my high school there was an English competition, a grammar competition, and, and, and basically pretty much students from every single class, I mean like, you know, the best of the best from you know, first graders, second graders, third graders, fourth graders, pretty much the best of the first, second, fourth, third, and fourth graders were pretty much brought there and to, you know, to freaking take part in it. And guess, and, and, I, and I was of course, well, the only first grader there, the only fucking first grader there. And guess who, who, who got the best score on the, on the goddamn competition? Me! Fucking me! I, I wrote, I took part in an English competition as the only first grader and fucking got a better score than the fourth graders. The best of the fourth graders got a worse score than the fucking dyslexic new kid. Really? Goddamn, homie. Oh, there, one day they uh, erected a statue of me in the fucking English classroom. I decided I would report my findings to the students at school the next day. It was possible that I would also be able to help me and make some friends. But, before I could do any of that, I had to make sure that she made home one piece. I just checked the timetable. My train will be here in about 20 minutes. Have you checked to see when your train arrives yet? Shall I take that as a no? Go and check, please. Leah placed her bag in the seat and went to look and went to look at the timetable. Okay, that was just weird. It felt like I was a parent interrogating her child by doing her homework or something. Oh my god, that reminds me of my childhood. Hoodie, did you do your homework? Uh, yes. Can I check? Uh, you don't have to check. I I did really good and, and stuff. Hoodie, you didn't do your homework. Uh, you see, mom, I was gonna do it, but I forgot to do it. And hoodie, how could you? Uh, I can explain. Yeah, that's basically my primary school me in a nutshell. I asked Bia in a soft, yes, yeah, heard the voice, which had done what she was supposed to do. She hesitated. I asked her in a similar voice that to do as she told us she sold. And after more hesitating, she gave in and did it. Is this how my parents felt when they had to discipline me? Oh my god. This is what it looks like from their perspective, huh? Looks like I looks like I got an apology. <laughs> nah. I mean, I will, I can apologize to my dad. I mean, my dad is a bit of a jerk at times, and she is harsh to me, and she makes me feel like a piece of shit more than once. And basically, he insults me and pretty much fucking verbally demolishes me at times when I do bad at school. But at least she, but at least he has intentions of having me improve as a person instead of being a Sure. I guess treating someone like crap, hoping and hoping to make them a good person is better than is better than treating them like like crap just just for the just for the sake of it. <laughs> so yeah, I can forgive my dad. I mean, he does a lot. Of, he does a lot of hard work. He has to tolerate my mom. <laughs> so yeah, I I can I can apologize to him whenever 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 the, whenever, whenever I have to. I watched Mia examining her timetable. Because of her height, she had to sit on her toes to see it properly. It was funny to watch. Not to mention pretty cute. I should probably stop being a jerk and go, go over there and actually help her. You think? Wow. <laughs> Maybe an extra set of eyes will help her find her train quicker. I got up to walk to her. Then I remember her school bag was seated next to me. I turned back and saw that I had fallen off the seat and something had fallen out. Again! And apparently this girl was not in the habit of closing her bag properly. Yeah. I always close my bag, you know. I remember when my friend fucking once tripped and his bag was open and, and pretty much every fucking, all the fucking contents of his goddamn bag fell right on, slid out, slid like, off, off, out of the bag, right onto, right onto, right onto the back of his goddamn head. Poor guy. I bent down and started putting the items back into her bag. Hmm? And then something caught my eye. Amongst the pile this pillow of contents was a calculator that I accidentally broke and then disposed of. What on earth is this doing back in Mia's bag? She didn't back at school when she said she needed to use the toilet. Could it be that when she finished she snuck back into the classroom and took the calculator out of the trash? It's also possible that she didn't even u get to use the toilet to begin with. Perhaps she simply made up an ex made up an excuse so that I would I would leave and she could sneak in and take it. I can't think of it. The time started getting all quiet. I was finally disposed of the calculator. I was brushing the dirt off her. The direction she was staring in was the classroom where I disposed of it. At the time she had started behaving happily again, 
was after she came back from the toilet. Of course! It all made sense now! For some unknown reason, Mia really wanted her calculator back, regardless of its condition. All of the pieces were, playing, were falling into place. Sort of. But why would she hide it from me? More importantly, why would she lie to me in order to retrieve it? Why didn't she just ask me to get it back into her instead of letting me toss it away? Was it really that precious to her? It just looked like an ordinary calculator to me. But for all I knew, it was a gift from a loved one she had, cher she had cherished with all her heart. I guess I really didn't have any right to just for away without asking her first. Yeah, I'm the type of guy who who is so who has so little of what's fine. He just goes, "Hey, can I do this? Can I do that? Can I do this? Can I do that? Can I do that?" Yeah, imagine me in bed, huh? Hey, can I can I touch your breast? Hey, can I go harder? <laughs> oh man, you don't even have to mock me. You don't even have to fucking mock me. I just mock, I just do your job. Sorry, trolls. I'm doing your own goddamn job of trolling me because I keep trolling myself. <laughs> you simply put, almost can't troll me. You just have to go out of your way to just try to troll me because I troll myself on a regular basis, just like I just did. <laughs> oh man, I'm one of the few YouTubers who just who are their own who are their own trolls. I decided to put it back and pretend I didn't see anything. Given the circumstances, it was the least I could do. What the? As I went to put, put the calculator back in the bag, I felt something slimy on my fingers. I looked, I looked at my hand and saw it was covered in a clear liquid. It was saliva. Click, click, boom. I'm coming down on the stereo. Hear me on the radio. Click, click, boom. I'm coming down with the new style and it was buck wild. Click, click, boom. I'm on the radio station. Traveling around the nation. Living the scene in devastation. Sorry, there's like this rock. Kind of the rap lock, kind of rap rock like song called Click Click Boom. It's kind of good. If you're a fan of rock music, then you should listen to it. Maybe you'd like it. Ah, nasty! When did that happen? Did they get spit on at some point? What the hell is with some people? I've seen strange, stranger fetishes. You haven't been unfortunate, even over hoodie. Go to. Get your phone out right now. I'm, I'm serious. Get your phone out right now. Yeah, like that, like that. And just fucking look up some, look up some of the stranger fetishes in the world, and and tell, and then tell me what the hell is wrong with some people. Saliva is kind of, I you know, saliva is acceptable because it's kind of hot when you know, you know, French kiss and there's a string of saliva connecting your mouth. That's kind of you know, sexy I guess a bit you know a bit. I mean it's kind of it's kind of sloppy but you know it's still kind of attractive in a way. I've seen stranger fetishes. Apparently, there's. A, I've been also. I've been trying to do. I've been doing some research, and I've see. I've been trying to look up if there's like a fetish for depression. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you can fucking like say that I'm the. First, I'm. I think I'm the only person in the world who just typed in. Uh, go, ty just went on Google and typed in depression fetish. Yeah, I'm the first person in the world. I'm probably the only person in the world who actually looks something like this up. Because apparently, uh, probably a lot of fangirls have a fuck have a fucking fetish for depression. Because all because all the emo guys are the most are the most popular of fangirls. Well, unless you're talking about Levi from Attack on Titan, but you know. As I recoiled in disgust, I dropped the calculator back onto the ground. I leaned in to pick it up, and then I noticed something. Okay, that's bizarre. The calculator also had saliva on it. Not uh, every inch of it, mind you. It looked more like it was. It originally originated from a broken screen and then ran down when the calculator was tilted upwards. <gasps> the calculator is a mouth! And it's drooling! Yeah, that's my conspiracy theory. But even so, there was a lot of it. It was as if someone had been making out with it. Like one of those really stupid steamy movies that my mom doesn't know I watch. <laughs> Over hoodie, what the fuck are you watching? I'm on the... I sp spend most of my day on the weird part of YouTube, but I never watch those steamy movies. Well, not that often, anyway. The real question was, was it me a saliva? Or did it get onto the calculator because of something else that was also in the trash? I just happened to have saliva on it. A lot of kids threw their food wrappers and stuff into the trash at lunch today. And some kids were pretty keen on leaving, looking at every last crumble or whatever from the pack before they threw them away. Which is kind of gross in my opinion, but still. Maybe I'm, maybe it's just me being soft. Nah. 
Oh, sorry, sorry. I got preoccupied. Maybe it came from one of those. It wasn't about the realm of possibility. But wait. I can remember whether or not the trash bag haven't replaced the part of disposal the calculator. Could he? I spent around five minutes standing over me. When did she get there? She must have had the self of a cat. Well, that's what happens when you back into sneak. And, 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 and agility. Some people say that, you know, ninja builds are, over, are overrated, but Mia is proving, us, are proving otherwise. My train arrives in 18 minutes. Huh? Oh, right, great. Who do you dumbass? Yep. At least try to remember what you're doing beforehand so you can avoid looking suspicious. I quickly stuffed the calculator into my blazer pocket. Given its condition, that probably wasn't the best move. What are you doing on the floor of my school bag? Oh, this? It fell down and I was just picking it up for you. I stood up and handed her her bag. What? She had a dubious look in her eye. I hope that she didn't he feel the need to verify that everything was was fair. Hedy is so nice. He's always looking out for me. I'm so happy. He, Mia took the bag and hugged it tightly. No doubt because she assumed that the calculator was still in there. Little did she know it was currently in my pocket. Uh, yeah, that's me, all right. <laughs> Mr. Nice Guy. Ah, as a kid, I, I, when I was like 10 or 12 years old, I was a, I was a, I was a nice guy. Now I'm just, I just don't give a fuck, and, just, and, and I'm just an asshole when, I'm, when I feel like being an asshole. And that's why I'm not very popular with girls. I mean, you know, I get to t I talk to my female classmates, you know. I kind of spend more time with my female classmates than with, with my male classmates. I technically talk to more girls than I talk to more g than I talk to guys, but you know. Wait a minute. I just gave you the perfect, I just gave you guys the perfect fucking setup for a... For a either a porno or a fucking romantic romantic comedy, a guy who has so who has more female friends than male friends, get to it. <laughs> nah, just kidding, just kidding. But you have my blessing, and if you actually and, and, and if that fucking idea actually inspired you, then fucking uh, send me the thing, you, then send me the fucking thing you made with that idea, so I can watch it and tell you how how fucking cool I think it is that you made it, that you based it off of me. I stole it away from her a second time. Some nice guy I was. <laughs> yeah. Sure, I took out spontane spontaneity, but it was no excuse. <clears throat> excuse, sorry. I need to find a way to give the calculator back to me without her, without her getting mad. So, uh, your train was. You said your train was a ways off as well, right? Well, in that case. Hmm, let's think. Alright. There's something I want to talk to you about. There's something I want to talk to you about. Hmm? Who was I kidding? I didn't want to cause this girl any more grief. It was, it, it was time to be a man, come clean. Be a man! I am a man! I sat back down on the bench. Mia placed her bag by her feet and sat beside me. Then I reached into my pocket and pulled out her calculator. Why do you? It fell out of your bag while you were over at the timetables. I meant to put it back when you came back. I got nervous and stuffed it into my pocket. I'm sorry, Mia. I had no idea this calculator was so important to you. I should have asked you before I went and threw it away. Mia took the calculator from my hands. Uh, wait, Mia, it's covered in... I'm sorry, too. Huh? I said I'm sorry, too. I lied to hoodie. You know I'm here, right? You don't have to speak to me in, fr in, in the first person, since I'm right right in front, right beside you. I said I need to go to the toilet when, when really... I just want to get the calculator back. I'm sorry. Do you forgive me? Do you, hoodie? Please forgive me. Don't hate me, hoodie. This girl. Eh? Dummy. Why wouldn't I forgive you? But, but it's not like I write it's not like I like you or anything. You idiot. <laughs> Am I just talk I'm just acting like a tsundere, goddammit. I'm just being a tsundere right now, you know, for the fangirls. For the future fangirls, I can't believe. I gently rubbed me his head. Mm. Mm. Hey. She blushed like they nuzzled my hand. She really was pretty cute. I guess you're both just a couple of liars. And it looked like you were both worried for nothing. We both apologized and forgave one another. And everything was right once more. And so we sat here together on the bench, waiting for our strings to arrive. After about 10 minutes, I started to get thirsty. I remember sparring with a vending machine by the overpass when we arrived. I figured that was a good time as any to have a soda before I got home. 
My mom was pretty anal about me having anything sweet at the time of the day. Uh, <laughs> yeah, my mom is pretty much goes, Hey, hoodie, I think I'm gonna. What, do you want some chocolate? I recently bought some. And I'm like, um, um, I don't really want any, any sweets right now, sorry. Yeah, I'm one of the few people in the world who actually refuse free sweets because I just don't want to get fat, you know. I mean, yeah, I know that eating, that eating one chocolate bar will not make you instantly fat. Is it that if I, I don't want to get into a habit? Ha habit, fuck. Sorry, my pronunciation is a bit off because, of the, because I'm a bit tired. Especially since I was getting pretty close to dinner time. So I decided I would fetch myself a soda and quickly drink it for my train ride. I turned to me I, I turned to me and to ask if she wanted something to drink as well. And that's when I finally noticed it. Mia still had the calculator out. But that wasn't what caught my attention. At that point, the last puzzle piece suddenly fell into place. The staring, the reason for lying, the personality shift, the saliva on the calculator. All of my questions were, ever, were answered with a single glance to my left. Oh fuck, creepy music. What the? There was Mia, with the calculator in hand, and she was licking it. Right in the broken frame I cut my leg. Her tongue was ravishing the internet from the person's mouth. Is she practici practicing kissing? Specifically in the areas where my blood has seeped into. And the look on her face. Well, if she want, I guess she wants some of my DNA. <laughs> yeah, you can't get pregnant by with someone's blood, you know that, right? And the look on her face. Ecstasy. How this is gonna? How is this not a meme? Seriously, just like like, like Mia's tongue rolling out of her mouth and the like, saliva coming in calculator, and just like the caption, ecstasy. How is this not a meme? Seriously. No matter how no matter how much how much sex you have, you will never be you you will never be as orga you will never be as orgasmic as a young dirty girl licking licking blood of, licking the her loved one's blood of her calculator. That was the only way to describe it. Yeah, look at her. She's like, she's like in the middle of a fucking orgasm. It's like, oh yes, this blood is so delicious. <laughs> oh my god, what the fuck? It was as if lapping up my blood was her single greatest pleasure in life. Kind of stalkerish, don't you think? And if I had to guess with the amount of force she was using, this blood would have effectively all been gone by now. Yeah, the sweet, sweet golden taste is all gone, like bubble gum. The, 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 the taste has faded away, but you're still trying to get more of it. She wasn't stopping. In fact, she was increasing her pace. If possible, she would have probably kept on clicking until every trace of me was gone from that calculator. Now, this was absolute madness. No. This was Sparta! Me, I had a room from through garbage to reverse the little obscene calculator that can train to trace some of my blood in it. So I should lap it all up like a kid drinking milk. At that point, I started thinking I'm back on what I said to myself earlier. The other kids told me she was weird. And after talking about her for a while, talking to her for a while, I concluded that it was not the case. She was just a little bit dangerous. But it turned out we were all wrong. Mia wasn't weird. She wasn't spacey. She was insane! Completely and utterly insane, and for whatever reason, all of the insanity was, direct, was all directed at me. God damn it! Why does I always have to? Why does it have to be me? If basically, if, if there's a younger girl in, in the neighborhood, when her love, when about, when her love interest is gonna be me. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. If there's a younger, younger girl, she's probably gonna go for me. And is that like a cute and drink under where she's just like? Oh, I love you so much, I could just lock you up in my closet and cuddle you forever. And I was like, if you, if I see you looking at another, another girl, I'll kill her and, and, and hang her corpse from the balcony. Do you get that, hoodie? Only I can talk to you. You got that? Yeah, that's kind of like, that's kind of the younger I probably get. Oh, fuck. <laughs> what the fuck? I was like, just fucking going super saiyan, just fucking whoosh. With a wild roar, I grabbed the calculator from Mia's hand and smashed it into the concrete. Dang, god damn, homie. God damn, homie. I was like, Aah! I fucking smashed the calculator into a fucking billion pieces. 
Like, I just, just fucking spit, and I probably fucking stepped on it just to make sure that it smashed. For a moment, she didn't see it in her empty hands. I hope I didn't uh, cause you to lose your healing by, by my fucking wild roar. And then she slowly stood up and just stared silently at the broken calculator on the ground. And then she turned to look at me. Does this mean I can lick Hoodie's knee now? <laughs> just as I thought. It wasn't about the calculator. It was never about the calculator. It was all about licking my blood. I refused to let her disinfect my knee. So instead, she went for the next best thing. I didn't know what specific, but was sweet that this kid needed help. I grabbed Mia's shoulders and held her in place. She looked at my knee, and I slowly looked up at my face. It was scary. I was turned directly into her eyes, and then I could see was emptiness. Like looking through the eyes of a doll. Oh, fuck that. Dolls are the creepiest thing of all time. And that's why I prefer action figures. And that's why I still have a Doctor Doom fucking action figure in my room somewhere. What the hell happened to this girl? Why did Mia become so crazy? Mia stared back down my knee. So you didn't. So you never did put a band aid on it. You said you were going to put a band aid on it. But you didn't. And now Hoodie will get sick. Unless you, unless you let me disinfect it. You don't want to get sick, do you, Hoodie? Let me disinfect it if you don't get sick. I tightened my grip on her shoulders. Mia! The only sick person here is you! And not just because you've been like, ingesting blood and god knows what else from that dirty calculator. You're not thinking straight. We need to get you to a hospital. Hey, you're hurting me. I could feel her struggling to get away. I don't know what's creepier. Mia licking my calc Mia licking the blood my blood of the calculator. Or the fact that it sounded so rapey. But I wasn't about to let that happen. You're not helping, dude. She needed a doctor. She needed mental help. I know I only just met her that day, but I felt it was up to me to make sure that Mia didn't run off and hurt herself. Call it chivalry, call it stupidity, call it whatever the hell you want. Well, I was going to do whatever I, all I could to help her. It hurts, Hoodie. It hurts. Why is Hoodie hurting me? Why do we do. Dog. <laughs> Dog. Dog. I've been waiting for this. I've been waiting for so long to hear a younger girl say Dog. I have waited for so long. So to hear a young daddy girl say dong. Her beauty was like the finest sunset, and her voice was like velvet to my ears. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm done with poetry for now. Sorry, Mia, but you need to bear with me, because I'm, I'm not letting you go. I scanned the station for someone to call out to. I figured if I could get somebody to call an ambulance, I could keep Mia subdued until, until we arrived. Then the paramedic cleaned the house and said they could take her to a hospital. Hello! Somebody! We need an ambulance over here! What? Damn my lock. The place was deserted. Not even a lot of security guard. Well, you know. He went to Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. <laughs> he went to work at Fit. You know, the security guard was like, uh, nothing exciting ever happens here. I'm going to Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. At least that place has some exciting has some exciting events. And what what was that security guard's name? Mike Schmidt. Why? Did they call it clock they all clock off at the exact same time? I'm telling you, if I went to work at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, this damn economy. Yup, yup. This guy is almost like me. <laughs> he's like an extension. He's like an extension of, of, of a part of myself. He's kind of like my shadow. I am a shadow, the true self. This damn economy is ruining my life. It's making people's lives hard in so many ways. <laughs> First world problems. If it weren't for the current situation, I'd probably laugh at that remark. It hurts, Hoodie. It hurts. Why are you hurt hurting me, Hoodie? Why? Hoodie wouldn't do such a thing. Hoodie would never hurt me. This means you're not Hoodie. Oh fuck. She knows it's my shadow. She knows that it's not the real me. It's just an extension of myself. It's just a personification of a part of me that, I, that, exi that exists only in people's minds. Who are you? Where's Hoodie? What have you done with Hoodie? Give Hoodie back to me. Which reminds me of that one time when my, where I like brought my grit when I showed my grace, to my my grace to my parents and they, and they saw that I had good grace, like you know, mostly uh, freaking B's and C's and A, and sometimes even A's. And, I, and my mom was like, "Hoodie, like, 
who are you and what have you done to our son hoodie <laughs> oh man that was the funniest moment in my life because I have to admit that back in middle school I didn't give a fuck I genuinely didn't give a fuck I got F's out of the yes and I still passed the class without even having a fucking problem I guess I was a bit smart but I didn't give a fuck simply put I was the personification of not giving a fuck but in high school, I suddenly started giving a shit in high school and basically just went oh, I'll study for this, I'll study for that and I suddenly started getting smarter That's me as ramblings became more and more erratic so we came to struggle more violently Ow! Ow! <laughs> hey! No hang below the belt! Let, let go! Let go! Let go! Let go! Let go! Let go! do such a thing! Give him back! Give my hoodie back! Give hoodie back to me! Yeah, I was fighting with all her might to break free. I was beginning to lose my grip on her, in more ways than one. Help! Anybody! Someone, someone call an ambulance! And I struggled to keep her subdued. I called out into the empty station. Naturally, there was no response. Ah! Mia struck me. Mia struck me for well person and kicked the shin and managed to break away from my grasp. As I gripped my leg in pain, she wrapped the stool back and started hitting me with the Ow! 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 Ah, Mia, get a hold of yourself! Give him back! Give him back to me! Give him back and they'll go die! Die, hoodie imposter! Imposter! Oh, fuck me. Imagine someone who would fucking want to impersonate me, really. That's what, that's what I want to know. Die! 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 Mia, please stop! Die! 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 It's me! It's Hoodie! I am Hoodie! Please recognize my voice! That voice? Hoodie? Hoodie, is that you? The frenzied attack stopped and Mia stared at me with wide eyes. <laughs> That's right, Mia. It's me, Hoodie. I'm right here. Hoodie! Mia dropped to her knees and crawled over to me. Hoodie! 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 It's you! You're here! I can hear you! What happened? Where did you go? It doesn't matter. What's important is that you're okay. When was I not okay? Forget it. It seemed that Mia had instantly forgotten the entire ordeal. But I was okay with that. She had calmed down and nobody was hurt. Well, not severely anyway. My head and sh my head and shit were, were frothing in something fierce, but nothing like painkiller won't face. Oh man! Ugh. So I'm gonna turn into Max Payne, so I have a fucking painkiller addiction, huh? Eh. It's not like I expect to live. It's not. Well, I, I st I'm prob I still probably have an expiration date of like what 24 years 24 years of age, so so I'll probably die by, by the time I'm 24. So I I can probably not give a fuck about anything. Painkillers. With that thought in mind, I figured it was a good time to call for an ambulance and have a pick up, pick up Mia. I reached into my pocket and pulled out my phone. I turned it on and began to punch in the numbers. Sorry, I'm gonna punch in the numbers myself. Hello? Yeah, there's some crazy chick trying to kill me. Yeah, send, send in a fucking strike team. She's as, she's as strong as you know Gasai. And, she's, and she can probably kick kick Levi's ass. So be careful. <laughs> uh, sorry, I'm just fucking around. Don't worry, Mia. Everything's going to be alright. I know. <gasps> huh? Suddenly I hear the sound of metal screaming against metal. Oh, fuck me. She, she, has, she has two katanas. She's like Roxas from Kingdom Hearts 2. I looked up at Mia. Huh? At some point while I was looking at my phone, she had reached for a school bag, pulled out a pair of scissors. I was moving slowly towards me. Hey, Mia! Be careful with those. You don't want to go and cut yourself, do you? Don't worry, Hoodie. It's going to be alright. Just leave everything to me. I have you out of here in no time. Out of here? Out of where? Uh, what do you mean? What are you trying? What are you going to try and do? <laughs> <laughs> Silly hoodie. Happy like he doesn't know. She could go from a playful tone. Like what like it was all one big joke. Whatever the case, I it looks like I was right back where I started. Mia took another step closer. Brandishing the scissors, the scissors in front of her. I left my feet and moved back. Why are you running? 
old self I can help you. Let me help you, hoodie. Mia, just put just put this scissors down. Please, whatever it is you're doing, just stop. Hmm, that's strange. Could it be that hoodie doesn't want my help? Why why would he why wouldn't he want me to help him? How odd. How very, very odd. What help? What are you talking about? I have no idea what you're saying. Although, given the circumstances, how would I? Still, I found myself trying to make sense of her words. Blah. I sent my knees in disarray. I guess he never even realized it himself. What? What haven't I realized? Suddenly, I felt like it was, I, was, I too was going insane. Does expo exposure to madness cre create more madness? I guess it does. Well, violence breeds violence, so uh, maybe maybe madness breeds madness. Who, who, who knows? Pretty. Hmm? You're trapped. Huh? You're trapped inside the body of this creature who was trying to hurt me. Huh? At first, I thought I thought that maybe he had been reflected by a violent impulse impossible to make me suffer. But then I heard Hoodie's voice calling out to me. His kind, gentle voice he told me it was all okay. Don't worry, Mia. It's all okay. And that's what I finally understood. Hoodie was trapped. Trapped inside this creature in front of me. And that's when I knew that it was up to me to save you. God damn it. Why did she have to fucking like think I'm, I'm, I'm inside of a, inside the body of a monster and just self, I don't know. Me being under a spell by an evil witch and the only way to fucking break the spell was to kiss me on the lips. God damn it. Why didn't she think of that? What? You think I'm trapped inside of a body that looks like me? Because I tried to help? Don't worry, I thought it wasn't you yourself who was hurting me. It was all this imposter's doing. And Hoodie is just trapped inside of its body. But it's alright now, just hold still, because I'm going to set you free. By cutting open its stomach and pulling you out! <laughs> Whoa! I narrowed up for getting stabbed by the scissors. Mia had struck the concrete of the scissors and was shaken out the recoil. I decided to use the opportunity to make a run for it. I hurried to my feet and headed for the exit. <laughs> but Mia had recovered and it didn't take too long to catch up with me. Amidst all the chaos, I couldn't help but be amazed at the resilience. She was surprisingly fast for a shimikoji person. Well, I am, I am, I am not that. Well, a flag, so that must, so that's why, so that's why she can catch up to me so so easily. Or maybe she's like Mikasa Ackerman, where she's like, I'm, I'm so fit that I can, that I'm the strongest out of all of you. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God! Imagine having like a young dairy Mikasa, Mikasa, Mikasa Ackerman from Attack on Titan after you, dude. How would you even survive? I mean, like, she would survive, but you know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have any freedom. You'd be like. Her prisoner forever. <laughs> at least, she, at least we'd be well protected. Because, come on, Mikasa is so strong that she would pretty much kill <coughs> kill anyone who would, who would try to fuck. With you. <coughs> <coughs> oh, sorry, what the hell's wrong with me? Not for time. Not for time. Not for time. I sent out but just you know was struggling from behind. I veered to the right, and she ended up running right past me. But as she went by, her scissors went stretch me across my waist. I was bleeding. It was nothing major, but it was, it was still tongue a bit. But I was nothing compared to what she had, might have done if I didn't move in time. Mia screeched to a halt right from the turn to tiles. Panting slightly, she turned around and stared at me. My blood was trickling down with the of her scissors. Mia held the blade out to her mouth and licked it clean. <laughs> still your blood, huh? Her voice was so soft I couldn't hear what she said. Hoodie. It's still your blood! Why is your blood in that creature's body? I have to get it out! It has to come out! Get it out! Mia howled maniacally and charged towards me again. I frankly turned back and ran the other way. But since she was already close by, she had cut off in no time at all. And her attacks had become more fringe than before. It became harder and harder to avoid her. I had to keep looking over my shoulder with her attacks. But I also had to keep uh, looking in front of me to avoid tripping or running from something. Mia was fast, but due to her short stature, her reach wasn't very good. Yeah. So, I mean, if if Mia was tall, then we'd have a fucking Fedor Emelianenko situation on our hands, where she would not only be so fast that she would just that she would practically catch up to me in no time at all, 
but she had such a reason that she that she could fucking knock me out from a mile away. Open from time to time, her sister would make contact with her midsection, exposing my six pack abs, causing her to drool heavily a bit. <laughs> just kidding, <laughs> I'm just fucking around. I, have, I don't have six pack abs. Well, yet, you know, I'm gonna go work out and maybe get some good, better abs than I do already have. It was just like early when she was trying to do the timetable, but she had to sign on, stand on her toes because it was too high up for her to see. Pity, you can stop running now. I promise we'll be over soon. Me had called out to me from behind her in a playful tone. As I turned back to look at her, her expression was anything but, but playful. Her face appeared to be stuck in a deranged smile. It was absolutely terrifying. And I started to think just how much more deranged that smile would become if she were caught me. Careful, hoodie. Better watch out. Don't fall. She continued to taunt me childishly. Or so I thought. I haven't paid so much attention to me that I have forgotten to watch where I was going. And suddenly. <laughs> <laughs> Before I had a chance to react, I had run right off the edge of the platform and I landed face first onto the train track below. Ah! Damn it! My whole body was aching, both from the exhaustion of running for my life and from falling onto the hard, rocky tracks. But in spite of that all, in spite of all that, I somehow managed to get back on my feet. My legs were trembling, but not from fatigue. Are you alright, hoodie? With a deviously playful voice, lacking any ounce of compassion. I look back up at the edge of the platform to see Mia gazing down at me with scissors in hand and a very sadistic smile on her face. Now is not for time to be playing with frogs, Hibby. We need to hurry up and get to the creature's body before the train. Oh look, it's already here. <laughs> I sharply turned my head to the right and spot the train heading right towards me. It was a bit ways off. Before they get off the tracks quick, I was going to get run over. For a moment I stood there, frozen in terror. I was so scared I wasn't able to think clearly. The train was coming closer. Now it's not the time to lose focus. I shook my head but I only to send myself out of it. Okay, okay, quickly. Which way should I go? Jump onto the other platform. I can go back the way I came. Not with me as standing there waiting for me. No doubt she just start attacking me again if I climb back if I climb back up there. I head to the opposite platform. My body was silent from the chase, but somehow I still managed to pull myself back up. I staggered to my feet and looked back towards the tracks. I expected to see Mia sitting on the other side. But of course, that was just wishful thinking. Hoodie! You've got to be kidding me! It must have happened as soon as I pulled myself to safety. Mia had leapt down onto the tracks and was leisurely waking her way to the other side. All the while, the train was getting closer. Hoodie, don't run away. Let me help you. Come on, Hoodie. You idiot! We're going to get yourself killed! Go back! Go back! I screamed at me as we could climb back onto your floor platform, but she just kept on coming. This was bad. Even if she made it to the other side, there was no way she'd be able to pull herself off the time. She was going to get hit. Damn it! In what could possibly be considered the most ironic thing I have ever done, I jumped back and onto the path of the deadly uncommon train in order to rescue the psychotic girl who was trying to kill me. All I could say was thank god for fight or flight responses. Because at that point, my adrenaline kicked into overdrive and I was able to grab Mia roll onto the platform and hoist myself back up before the train came rolling in. Although, once that was done, the adrenaline wore off and I collapsed into the ground, completely exhausted. <sighs> now, unfortunately for me, Mia was still just as active as crazy as ever. Oh good, you finally stopped running, hoodie. Now I can finally cut you out of the creature's body. Hold still now. Mia hugged out her scissors and walked towards me. How the hell did she not drop beast to us until I tried to grab her? Damn it, hoodie! Now's not the time for trivial thoughts. I struggled to back, get back up, but my body was so tight and heavy that I could barely move. All I could do was lie her helplessly as, as Mia drew strong and grew closer. She walked over and sat on top of me. I slid into the abyss of her blank eyes and face stared back. The abyss stared back. I became one of the monsters I was trying to combat. Don't worry, hoodie. I'll have you out of that body real soon. I'm not going to my body alright. Just not up, just not up pseudo, pseudo grammar is what she was envisioning. It wasn't like a fucking ginger reverse red riding hood where the fucking wolf swallowed her and then pulled her out of the fucking... Oh wait, no, I don't think that was... I don't think that happened. Fuck me, I don't remember. But twisted her face 
me up first with a bunch of over a of my chest. They say when you when you say when you help someone, you feel a warm feeling inside. The only warm feeling inside of me that I felt was the burning in my lungs from the exhaustion. At that point, the exhaustion had come to take its toll. I was drifting out of consciousness. It was probably for the best. I knew that in a few moments I wouldn't be opening them again. I closed my eyes and drifted and drift into a deep and eternal sleep. Was it done? Was I dead? Was I in heaven? Where's this holy ghost at? Yo, Jesus, you owe me ten bucks. Or the other place. Ah, let's go to hell. Little boy going to hell. <laughs> just, just play little boy. You know what? Just pause the video and play little boy going to hell by Metallica. I was too afraid to open my eyes and find out. Hey, kid, you okay? Is he, is he breathing? Yeah, but he looks pretty shaken up. Poor boy. I heard a pair of, a pair of unfamiliar voices. I felt someone slapping my face. Come on, kid. Come on, kid. Pull it together. Careful, dear. Don't worry, I know what I do. I know what I'm doing. He's coming around. That's the way, kid. It's okay, guys. He's good now. I opened my eyes and found myself on the floor of the station, surrounded by people. A man and a woman were kneeling next to me. All right, people, stand back. Give the boy some breathing room. Right back, right back. Oh, look at you being all bossy. Hey, come on now, sweetie. I'm having a moment here. Don't spoil it. Yeah, don't ruin this, like, brief cameo in the game. <laughs> the woman giggled as the man, I'm guessing her husband, scared the area around us. Ah! I tried to sit up with my side was aching badly. Hold still, child. Let me have a look. The woman looks off my shirt and examined my injuries. She took a she took a few minutes to examine my rock hard abs and my and my and my muscles. That looks quite severe. Hold on, I got some disinfectant in my bag. Don't worry about that, honey. Someone's already called the hospital, and ambulance will be here any minute. Let the pros treat his injuries. Even so, it would be good to clean the wound. Ambulance, injuries. Ah! It took a moment, but I finally remember what happened. Mia was about to slice me open. She had gone to a delirium. And if I was trapped inside of a, in the body of an imposter or something, she chased me through the train tracks. We were both going to be killed by, killed by an oncoming train. During the course of the adrenaline, of an adrenaline, of an adrenaline rush, I managed to see us both. I collapsed on the platform. And then me, I tried to finish the job. That's what I remember before I blacked out. Uh, just sit tight, kid. I was on the way. The girl. Huh? What's that, dear? What about. The girl. Ah, my bear. The girl. Where is she? What happened to her? Is she okay? Are you talking about the girl who was attacking you? Yes. Don't worry, dear. She can't hurt you anymore. She's being held at security office until the police arrive. Well, look, Mike Schmidt quit his job at Free Fast Beer's Pizza and decided to go back to just work at security at this fucking train station. Police? When we got off the train, there she was, sitting on top of it with the scissors in her hand. And then one guy ran and pulled her off of you. Then me and him grabbed her and took her to the security office. She's small, but she was one hell of a fighter. fighter. Boy, I'll tell ya. And we got away from us at one point. Just as well, we, we, we took it, the scissors off of her all equipment and got real nasty. And she gets screaming, I have to cut it out of him! Or something like that the whole time, too. You got any idea what's that about, kid? That's enough, dear. The poor boy's been, been full enough already. Okay, go and get a cold drink, please. You've got it, honey. Where will be, kiddo? Dear? What's going to happen to her? Pardon? The girl. Will she be treated, too? Well, I imagine so. But I don't understand what you're so concerned about, so why would you try to kill you? Yeah, we gotta prioritize better, kid. That crazy chick isn't worth losing any sleep over. <laughs> On one hand, yeah, it's kind of di it's kind of difficult to uh, you know fucking worry about someone who just tried to kill you. But you know, you in some cases you have to be a you know kind of a nightmare fetishist, F fetishist just you know be like, oh she's crazy. Oh, I'd go out with her if she was crazy for me. That's why so many people like you know Gaslight, because, it, because come on, crazy chicks are kind of interesting in that dangerous 
way, you know, where like every night is a roulette over which you will rape you or cut you up or eat you or whatever. Unless she's like your girlfriend, because that's it. And man, we got interest in tasty women, buddy. <laughs> you don't know the half of it, bro. Here. Sorry. You got it all wrong. It's my fault that this whole thing happened to you in the first place. Huh? How is it your fault? It's difficult. It's difficult to explain. I don't know exactly how it got started. All I know is that it's my fault she escaped this far. Before we met, she was just your average girl. Actually, she was a reclusive woman with the personality of a rock. But I didn't want to split hairs. Sure, I got a few physical injuries. I only hope that I didn't pass out from the severe pain in my stomach before I finished pleading my case. My fat girl is mentally ill. She needs medical attention. <laughs> what would I do? She doesn't need to be arrested. She needs treatment. Up until this whole mess got started, I was trying to get her get it. The nice couple listened quietly as I continued to defend the VS actions. I knew that there was nothing they could do for her. But they were kind enough to listen to what they had to say without trying to cut me off, and I really appreciated that. I knew how it must have sounded. Here I was, desperately trying to defend the person who would try to kill me. I would have blamed them for if I was free too. That's just the kind of person I was. Even after, even after everything Mia put me through, I was willing to forgive her and continue trying to get her help, give her the help that she'd so desperately need. After a while, the paramedics and the police arrived at the station. Mia was examined for injuries and then taken into custody, much more me. I was taken to a hospital and received stitches for the gash in my stomach and the apparent damage that had to my head. I didn't know anything could hit that hard. The couple from the station came by to visit the woman. They won't, they won't make some cookies in the house and put me a cell phone to the vending machine lobby. They were really nice people. And we went for them, for them and the man who pulled me off me, phone had me. I swore to myself that I would repay them all someday. I remained in the hospital for a week until the doctor said I was going to leave. A few days later, the, the police stopped by and asked if one to press charges against me. I originally intended to say no. But since I was still a minor in the eyes of the law, my mom ended up calling the, the, calling the shots and ended up going to trial. Mia's lawyer had filed for a not guilty plea by which was of insanity. He found innocent she would go free, which was good in a way. But she would end up not receiving any medical treatment and probably try to kill me again. Fortunately, before that could happen, my lawyer might manage to deal with Mia's. In exchange for a, guilt, for a guilty plea, she would be sent to a psychiatric facility to undergo the medical treatment she so desperately needed. Throughout the course of the trial, the police tried to track down Mia's family, but nobody was ever found. Do, 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 do. One month later. Mm -mm. Man, I love these hat days. Come on, after these now, we're making it time to catch our movie. What, Guardians of the Galaxy? Nah, I don't really watch them that many movies these days. I prefer to spend my time wa watching YouTube videos or reading mangas. Yeah, I'm a bit of an otaku. I recently started getting into mangas. The first manga I, I read was a. Uh, I mean, I, I like bought myself one one future diary manga, and the first manga I ever read it was a uh, Bleach, because my friend brought it to school one day, and, and we started reading it during history class. Yeah, that's this is exactly what's going on show for me. So instead of paying attention to history class, we were reading manga. Yeah, I'm not kidding. You guys for tickets? Order them online this morning. Sweet, let's go. Not so fast, boys. What now? Can't just wait for a bit of a hurry. Correct me if I'm wrong, but don't you have much to have a time to fish? Uh, we'll do them later. Now the time we're having fun. Yeah, what he said. Really? Because last I heard you were, were falling free for her behind in your studies. Is that right? My source is also informed that if the two fell in the middle of the floor this week, that we both get held back. What? Well, your sources are mistaken. I have you know that all my assignments are up to scratch. No way! Since when? Ow, my foot! It's a matter of fact. Yes, it is. Or okay, it will be. With some outside help. Outside help, huh? Indeed. Hmm. By which you mean asking me very nicely to let you copy my report and, and then make small changes to make it look more authentic? School in a nutshell. <laughs> That's the idea. What do you say? What's in it for me? Name your price. Hmm. Ugh. What? These tickets will do nicely. But, but, but. No, we can't do that! But what I see you have two choices. Link with the tickets, copy my work, pass the course. Or don't. Your choice. Deal. Wise decision. 
Here are my notes. I could help this out. I love to catch a movie. That reminds me of that one girl who uh, who let me copy her notes. Who let me copy her, have copy her notes. She was really nice. I mean, like I was I was falling pretty behind in biology class, and she was so nice that she borrowed borrowed her goddamn notebook just so I could read her you know notes and and pretty much study off of them. I still haven't paid her for that. A few of my friends joke that they owe her a date. But I didn't cash in that day, unfortunately. But she didn't cash. But she didn't cash in that day, unfortunately. These notes have every worth it. The funny thing is, they are. <laughs> oh man. Hey, at least they are. After the movies. Yep. Courtesy of two generous gentlemen. I got next to take my company. No thanks. I already seen it. Really, that's too bad. I wonder who should I take. Hmm. Oh, how about hoodie? Let's see the bell rang. He did it before. I'm not sure, but it's been like every half day. Once the bell rings, he's out the door. I hear that uh, everyone wants to hang out, hang out on weekends and whatever. I wonder where he goes. Who knows? I guess one of these days we'll have to tail and find out for ourselves. <gasps> what other hand thing to do? I like it. I hate it. These two girls two girls as well. Uh -huh. Great, I have two stalkers now. God damn it. I have to I have to pretty much fucking get surgery so I have eyes in the back of my head. Which will look fucking creepy and which will look fucking terrifying. But it will be fucking cool because I will see see what's behind me. Which means that nobody can take me by surprise anymore. Here so soon. Visiting hours have only just started. That's me, Mr. Punctual. Some call it a blessing, others always call it a curse. We didn't need to rush all the way over here, you know. You could have at least had something to eat before you came. What? I missed a chance to sample some of your tasty hospital cuisine? Don't be ridiculous. I hope you're referring to the cafeteria food. I don't want to see you stealing food from your patients. Oh, I wouldn't dream of it. Although the cafeteria jelly isn't quite as good as you give to the... Oh, but just listen to me rambling on. If I didn't know any better, right? So you enjoy coming here. Why? It's practically like a second home to me now. And some days it's even more peaceful here than my, than my whole house. Holy fuck. Holy crap. Dude. Just like real life. A mental asylum is much is a much more peaceful place than my own goddamn home. God damn it! This this visual novel was made with me in mind. Especially now that my mom's gun gun for sprinkling mode. Oh fuck me. My mom is obnoxious when she's in cleaning mode. Yeah, she like she's a bit of a clean freak, almost like Le Levi from Attack on Titan. Only she's more she's she's obnoxious, she's obnoxious and Levi is just neat. Should I be concerned that you are able to find some sauce in a psychiatric facility? Can I spend the week with my family thing and have your answer? <laughs> Holy shit, that's exactly what I would say. God damn it. Turns out that this guy is actually is me. <laughs> this guy is looking like an extension of myself. I'm, I'm not kidding. I will say the same thing because it's because my family is fucking crazy, let me tell ya. Well, if that's the case, we set you up for the combination to our finance establishment. <gasps> I can get my own room? Cool! Where can, where, where can I move? To the housing courtesy of housing the state. Of course, we need to sign documents for your mother. Oh, that, I, that can be arranged, doctor. If I give her, I, if I give her enough beer, then she'll, then she'll, then she, then she'll sign anything. Even a death note. And your physician. I, 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 I can, I can fucking do that. And we need you to be clinically insane. <laughs> Consider it done. <laughs> Well, with final exams coming up, I just might end up taking you up on that offer. The doctor and I continued to joke as we made our way down to the long corridor of the institution. So, what's Mia's condition like? Considerably better than last week. We've managed to get her to come out of her shell a little bit more since her last visit. The other day, a nurse managed to whip up a conversation with her for a full five minutes before she started to withdraw again. Care to guess what the topic of discussion was? Oh, oh, I got it, I got it, I got it. Uh, ah, uh, uh, it's at the tip of my tongue. Isn't it? Um, it's uh, turbo hydrodynamics. No wait, no wait. Oh, nuclear physics. No wait. Uh, oh, I got it. Global globalization and and uh, fucking modern art. Oh, oh, yeah, globalization and modern art. She says that we're building McDonald's in Japan is bullshit. 
social economics. Almost. Moi. You get a gold star. <gasps> I also get a gold star? Oh my god! When can I move there? Oh my god, it's the best mental hospital ever! I food, housing, cool neighbors, fucking interesting people. God damn, I get gold stars? Shit, so when can I move here? Wait till I tell mommy! Hold well, regardless of how much you try to interact with Mia, the truth of the matter is what she really hangs out for are your visits. It's not easy being popular. I'm sexy and I know it. <laughs> are you still keeping her away from sharp objects? Let's just say... Let's just say that she's been become very accustomed to eating soft food. And it's still nowhere on her family, I'm guessing. The police managed to strike down her birth records. But apparently her parents have been deceased for a few years now. What about grandparents or aunts and uncles? The police searched, but there is no other living relative to this anywhere. How was she able to pay rent or buy food? How has she survived all this time? Her parents took out a life insurance policy shortly after she was born. At the time of their death, it was accumulated to a considerable amount, more than enough to survive on, especially given she only spent the money on essentials. Does a label make her count as an essential? <laughs> yup. She went to an apartment and had been living there by herself ever since. And she still attended school? That's... sensible. Shit. Not even I would do that. God damn, homie. If I had like the decision of either not going to school or not going to school, since technically I had enough money to, you know, fucking support myself for a, for a considerable amount of time, so, ah, fuck going to school, I'll just, sit, I'll just sit on my ass, fucking jack off, watch TV, play Borderlands, listen to music, write fucking short, write, write fan fiction, uh, we listen to Yandere audio CDs. If it were me, I'd probably drop out of school and piss away the inheritance and I'd get rich quick, get rich quick scheme or something. Yeah, probably that too. You got that matter resolved, that's for sure. I'll say. My daughter's was learn to take from her. The other day, she spent all of her things on a new phone, even though she already had a perfectly good phone, I bought her not one more earlier. Damn! And here I thought that I get new phones after. I recently got my new iPhone 5. Yeah, iPhone 5 in 2015, I know. And I was perfectly happy with my iPhone 4 for like... F two... Two years, let's say. What can I say? We live in a materialist world. <clears throat> we live in a material world, and she is a material girl. Some kids today just don't, don't know how good they have it. Ah, uh, not just kids. Why? I have half a mind to go down here to have a check with Mia. Maybe she can talk some sense to my daughter, I'm because I sure can't. Yes, Doc, let the borderline homicidal meditation start some sense to your daughter. That was all everything. <laughs> well, you know what they say. When you want to teach someone sw to swim quickly, we have to we have to throw into a deep body of water. For his daughter's sake, Doc, I hope this place is going to bring a kid to work. <laughs> uh, that reminds me. You know what? Allow me to tell you a short story from my life. Uh, one year, one entire year of my life, between me finishing preschool and me going to middle school, uh, I mean, uh, primary school, I had, like, 300, almost 365 days of bring your kid to work day. Pretty much every single work day that my, uh, parents, uh, that my dad had, he took me to work with him. It was fucking awesome, you know why? I, I, like, set the entire day on a, in a fucking, in my own office, you know, and, and I played in my, and I played video games all fucking day. From like 8 to 8, 9 a.m. to fucking 5 p.m. Yeah, I had a fucking chill year. Man, those but that, that was a time that is unfortunately too gone. If I may ask, how did her parents die? They were flying to Hong Kong for a business seminar when the plane was hit by a turbulence and crashed into a mountain. I see. I breathed a short sigh of relief, making sure the doctor didn't hear me. You were worried that she might have, I have, might have had something to do with her death, weren't you? She's, you know, she's not, you know, Gossai. Who, me? Nah. Clearly, I need to with my poker face. Pa 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 poker face, pa pa poker face. I'm really teeny. The doctor chuckled softly. <coughs> Crap. An hour and a half of non-stop talking is taking its toll on me. I wonder, did their deaths have been, have been the reason that Mia became how she was? Or could it be that she was really liking her her deaths? Was it my interaction with her that triggered her push like I had a break? And exactly when and, and where did, did Mia and I allegedly first met? First meet? 
I hope that this question will be answered in the goddamn reboot which Zero Q is apparently working on. I hope it will come out soon because it's freaking uh because I wanna know how because I hope that they will answer the question of uh how did the how did protagonist Kun and fucking Mia got first met? Because this is the question that is that is fucking in my that is in my head since I first like heard of heard of the plot. I had so many questions. Well, with Mia being the way she was, I was pretty sure that they would never get be answered. We finally arrived at her room. Mia, we have a visitor. We're waiting for a reply from Doctor Pulada here, not for more. There was Mia sitting by the window, staring out the trees. She made no effort to acknowledge that someone had entered the room. What? No greeting? That's not very nice, Mia. When Mia heard my voice, she immediately turned around to face us. It's Hoodie! Hoodie, Hoodie came to visit! She ran, she ran over and embraced me, putting her face in my chest. I got scared for a minute there. I thought it might have been someone else, but I'm glad it's you. I was worried you wouldn't come. Hey now, have I ever let you down before? Oh. I chuckled and stroked Mia's head. She ran and glanced at the doctor with her usual vacant face. This, of course, was nothing new to him. Alright, alright, I can see that you want me to leave. I'll be heading back to my office now. I'll come get you when visiting hours are at, please. Thanks, Doc. The doctor smiled one last time and left the room, closing the door behind him. We remained standing in the same spot for a while. I stared out at the trees while I patiently waited for me as a patient person. This was a normal scenario when I came to visit her. Oftentimes, she wouldn't break away from me for a full 20 minutes or so. I guess me not being for all that time had caused me to become deprived of much of the attention that she had, that she felt she couldn't get from anybody else. That was just my guess. Well, you know what they say. Mm, no, wait, no, wait, fuck. How, how should I put it? Well, oh, this is, this is the type of a situation where the next best thing won't cut it. No, there we go. You have to get that certain product instead of the next best thing, you know. I have no position. I said I queried the doctor about later. Clearly, your time here is a far, far more sociable person, Mia. You know, it used to be that you wouldn't so much as look at the doctor who was, was talking to you. I didn't know what they were attributing you here, but it looks like you're a much friendlier person. It must be the drugs. And he's teasing me. Not at all. Well, I'm telling you. That was a compliment. Acknowledging over people and interacting with them. The doctor told me about your little chat with one of the nurses. That was very good. It shows that you're getting better. I'm proud of you, Mia. Uh, Hoodie is proud of me. That's right. We're doing good. I stroked Mia's head again. She let out a soft smell and continued to nod my chest. Although it seemed to be improving, I knew it would be a long time before Mia was deemed well enough to leave this place. There was also the possibility that she would never fully recover and remain here for the rest of her life. Oh god damn it, this is just getting depressing. Oh god damn it, this is just getting depressing. It was a sad fight. It was so far better than letting her go and risking her violent attack. Yeah, it's better off this way. I can't believe the thought of, of Mia being convicted of murder and thrown in jail. Or worse, she tries to free police pursue and ends up being shot. Okay, enough of that kind of fought hoodie. With the way things were, it was clear that she was going to be here for a long time anyway. I put those nasty thoughts out of my head and tried to enjoy my time with her. Will hoodie still come to visit? Huh? If I don't ever go home, and I stay here forever, will hoodie still come to visit me? Will you? Did Mia leave my mind just then? How did she know what I was thinking about? Maybe because she was embracing me so tightly she was able to take change my heart rate or something. Given the way that things had already played out, I would have been so surprised if super surprised if she could do that. Huh? Dummy. Well, that's a big question. Of course I will. But it's not be but not because I like you or anything, you you, you psycho. Uh-huh. Hoodie. Womp. Mia yeah, left my arms and sitting flying off my feet. How nostalgic. It was just like the day I first met her. Like this time I was sitting in front of her bed and it was sort of a soft fall. You mean it? Do you really mean it? If I stay here forever, you still come and visit me? Forever and ever? If I stop coming, you'll be lonely, right? Yes. I'd be so lonely without Hoodie. When Hoodie is here, then I don't feel alone anymore. So please keep coming to visit me. Please, Hoodie. Don't let me be so lonely. Be lonely. Promise? Yeah. Promise. <laughs> We laid together on the bed and talked until everything else were off. In the end, Mia was sad to see me go, but she loved to watch me leave. <laughs> well, I hate to see Hoodie go, but I love to watch him leave. 
<laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. You know, it'd be funny if, I, if, I, if there was like a fucking if if that if that if there was a fucking thing in, in the reboot where where, where like uh, there is like a fly on the mo fly on the wall mode where like the main protagonist leaves and like and he's like I hate to see protagonist go but I love to watch him leave. <laughs> oh man, that would be the fucking funniest thing in hindsight. In hindsight, don't you think? In the end, you know, I decided to see me go, but I should hear that I'll be back next time. Hopefully, that made the way a little more, a little bit, a little more bearable for him. As time passed, it became abundantly clear to a doctor that Mia's condition would not improve anywhere past the current point. I'm glad she became a permanent resident of the institution. But I remained true to my word and continued to be the change I got. I even managed to help me open up a little more for the and staff. But any conversation that she had with other people still around me centered around me. It got to the point where I became fam famous among the orderly as the Mia Whisperer. Like I said, it's not easy being popular. After I graduated from school, I moved into an apartment close to the institution. I got a job as a convenience store clerk in town, and would continue to visit me on my days off. As a result, the two of us grew closer together. I never did manage to get an answer out to my question as to where the two of us were spending at. With the amount of time the two of us spent together, it hardly seemed to matter anymore. And in time, I forgot all about it. All I remember was that on my first death in my new school, I met a strange girl who tried to kill me. But eventually got help and we became a couple. I guess that man who saved my life was right. I really did have a strange taste in women. I was in love I was in love with Yandere. My little Yandere Chan. Mia. <laughs> Pity, I love you. Happy end. Well, I think that's it. Okay then, okay then, yeah, no, no problem, no problem, zero Q. So, that was one of my longer videos. So, you know, if you like this video, click like down below if you want to see more, subscribe. Also, be prepared to see two more videos from this game as well. Do, 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 so, the, all, so the two other videos will be shitty because my mic, I mean because of the lack of, uh, you know, sound optimization. My, my, my mic is kind of quiet and, my, and the game is loud, so you won't be able to hear my commentary that well. But, it's not gonna be bad shit, I mean it's tolerable, but still. As usual, if you like this video, click like down below if you want some more, subscribe. Well, that's it for now, goodbye. And don't worry, I'll find a way to record, to record a video 